Today in our 2016 Chevrolet Silverado 3500, we're going to take a look at and also show you how to install the B&W Turnover Ball Underbed Gooseneck Trailer Hitch with Custom Installation Kit. Part number is BWGNRK1016. Here's what our gooseneck's going to look like installed in our truck and not in use. As you can see, we're going to have full unobstructed access to the bed of the truck. You can use it to haul around whatever it is that we would like. When it is time to use the gooseneck, what we'll be able to do is pull the locking handle on the outside, raise our ball up and out. We can rotate that over, get that slid right back in position, release our handle so it comes to the ball and that's going to have it locked in position for us. Now this is a 2 and 5 16 inch ball which is very standard with our gooseneck couplers and it's going to give us a 7,500 pound vertical load limit so that's the maximum downward force that we can put on our ball and it offers us a 30,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That would be the total weight of your trailer and anything that you were to load up on it. Of course you also want to check the truck's owner's manual, see what its tow rating is and go off of whichever of those are the lowest. Here you see once we're connected, our safety chain connection points are going to come up here, allow us to connect whatever size safety chain it might be, and then that is going to hold it right down against the bed of the truck so it's not going to be wiggling around too much, making too much noise. Now the ball itself is a solid one-piece stainless steel construction. You can see it's, a, well, it's kind of a square design. That's going to prevent any rotation um, that we can sometimes get from gooseneck balls, especially when we're trying to couple or uncouple them. You can see our release handle. It's going to be very easy to get to here in the wheel well. We just want to pull that out, rotate it clockwise. That's going to lock it in that open position for us, allow us to attach our accessories in there, drop in our gooseneck, our companion, either the, even the ladder rack kit for the system. Once we've got it in there, just rotate that back counterclockwise and allow that to pass through. Now you can see we've got our spare tire removed before we begin our installation. We're also going to be taking down this heat shield here. There are two 13 millimeter bolts. One's going to be right in the bottom of this round tube, right behind the heat shield there. And then one in the bottom of the frame right here, also behind the heat shield. When we get those removed and take it down, it's just going to make it a lot easier for you to see what we're doing. Next, depending on your bed size, you're going to want to measure from the rear edge forward and make a mark in the bed. This is going to be the area we're going to be drilling our hole in. Now we want this to be centered in the bed. Typically that's going to be in the center of your center raised rib here, but we will measure just to make sure. Now this is going to be different depending on the long bed and the short bed, so make sure you get the right measurement. Then we're going to measure from side to side between our wheel wells here. Once we've got that done, we'll want to take a punch just to give us a center mark location on there so we can start our hole saw. And we'll go from there with our four inch hole saw. Now we need to make a small notch. We're here in the rear passenger side fender well. And you'll see there's kind of already an area here where there's just one layer of steel. We're going to take that out. This one has an electrical connector that's there. So we want to get that out of the way, of course. That come down. We can zip tie that off right up here when we're done, that square hole. So it'll still give it a good connection point, but we want to keep that down and out of the way, especially while we're sliding our rails in. Now with that out of the way, it should allow us to slide our rail in and out of there without any interference. Now you'll see just behind that notch, we can see the top of a heat shield that's here. Now this is held in spot in a few different locations. We're going to be removing this, the 13 millimeter wrench. Just get in there, we need to get these bolts out. We've got two here on the frame rail, one here and one here. 
There's also going to be one located right above the rear rounded cross member here. And then just ahead of where we created our hole, there's another rounded cross member that's got a bolt. And once we've got the four of those out, we'll just kind of push it up over our frame rail there and then pull it down and out. Now we can take our front cross member. It's going to be the angled piece. The holes need to face towards the rear of the vehicle. And you'll see where this hump comes down, there's a little bit of an offset. It's a short area there, longer there. So this needs to go over towards the driver's side. Slide it right up through that notched area. Once we've got it in there a little ways, it'll rest there. We can go underneath and help it on across. All right, now the second hole over from the driver's side, we want to take one of our shorter half inch bolts in the O-ring that's in the kit, and we want to get that started just by pushing that O-ring down on it after we pass it through. Now it's time for us to get our center section put up into position, uh, but what we're going to do is just slide the passenger side of it. You can see the offset with that large hole there. We want that closer to the rear of the truck rather than closer to the front. Slide it up over the exhaust and then rotate it in position here. You see the large four inch hole there? We want that to line up with the hole up through our bed, just like that. That'll give us an idea on positioning. Do you like to secure it with a couple of bolts? All right, now that'll hold that in place. Let's get our rear bar put across here. Now we've got our rear cross member, and you'll notice with this, these holes are just a little bit closer to one side than they are to the other. Ultimately, when it's in position, we want those to be closer to the bottom, so just keep that in mind. Slide that right up and over, just like we did our other one. Go underneath and help it on across. Now we can rotate that up into position, just like that. Now we're going to align the holes that are in our rear cross member. You'll see how these are threaded. We're going to align those with the slots here. We're going to use our longer two inch, half inch bolts. We're going to flat washer on there, and a lock washer. I'm just going to put those through there and thread them right into the holes. Now we can go through and just get the rest of our hardware started here. Now we can get our side plates put into position. You can see our two flanges here. These need to go in between the front and the rear cross rail there. And then those plates are going to line up with our holes right here in the side. Already going to have weld nuts there. Just going to use our 16 millimeter hex head bolts with a lock washer and a flat washer for our front and rear location here. And for our rear hole location, for our side plate to our cross member connection point, half inch bolt with a flat washer and lock washer. Just thread that in. And for our forward hole location, just like we did underneath, we'll bring a bolt through. This time we'll add on a flat washer and a lock washer. And our nut. Then we go do the same thing over for our driver's set. All right, we've got all of our bolts installed now. It's time to go through and get all of these tightened down. There are torque specifications listed in your instructions, and you want to follow the appropriate order. We're going to start by tightening our head, or the center section, to the front and rear cross member. Then we want to square it up on each side just to make sure it's, it's even. Now with everything squared up, we can get to the side plate bolts that connect them to our cross members. Now 
Now we'll grab our latch handle. We're going to pass it over top of our frame rail. And through the half moon shaped hole that's in the side of the head. Once that's come through, we're going to line that up with the latch mechanism itself. You see we've got a carriage bolt provided with the kit. That's going to pass through the latch mechanism into the handle. And we'll finish that off with a flange nut. Then we'll tighten that down so it's snug, but we don't want to over tighten it. Right, now you see we'll pull out on that, rotate it. That's going to lock our pin in that open position. So we can slide our gooseneck ball down and in. And if we rotate the handle, that pin's going to slide back through, re-engage that ball and hold it nice and securely. Now for our safety chain connection points, you can try to drill a half inch hole up through the bottom, but as long as those drill bits are, it's pretty much impossible. So best thing to do is take a nice short drill bit and mark the center of each of those holes. We'll go around, we'll do that at all four of our locations, and then we can drill down through the top. That'll be a lot easier on us. We'll slide our U-bolts down. Now we're ready to slide our springs on the bottom side here. We'll slide them right up on those U-bolts. We're going to put on one of our lock nuts. Now we just need to tighten these up so they're flush with the bottom of the bolt there. So not too much. Now we'll get our spare tire heat shield put back in place here. Get our spare tire put back in and anything else that you took down with the exception of that one larger heat shield up front. And that'll complete our installation of the BNW turnover ball underbed gooseneck trailer hitch with custom installation kit. Part number BW GNRK1016 on our 2016 Chevrolet Silverado 3500. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.